Hello. My name is my name's Gregor, and, and I like to look smart. I'm also one of the founders of Morsuits, and I wear these quite a lot. Um, but the main reason I'm wearing this today is because the main thrust of what I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes or so talking to you about is being very passionate about what you do. And here I am practicing what I preach. Admittedly, it seemed like a better idea after a couple of beers last night when I decided to do this. But after sharing it with my 1.2 million Facebook fans, they insisted upon it and actually suggested I did the onion, which is where you wear like two more suits under like the one that you're wearing on top, and then you take them off as you go through the presentation. Um, very hot work, though, so I'm only wearing one. You'll be pleased to hear. So today is all about the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment in 18th century Scotland was characterized by an outpouring of intellectual and scientific achievements, which led Winston Churchill to say that of all the small nations on this earth, perhaps only the Greeks have had a greater contribution to mankind than the Scots. As a Scotsman, that makes me incredibly proud. I'm also incredibly proud because here we are today talking about the next enlightenment. And here I am on the stage talking to you, you guys who will be the driving force of that. So I had to think uh, and sort of read up a lot about the en enlightenment. I'm not particularly into my history, but for this, I wanted to, to get down with it. And, and when you look at all the people involved in the initial enlightenment, it is not readily obvious what they had in common. They were different ages, they had very different backgrounds, and wildly different areas of expertise. However, I don't think it was really about what they did, it was more a case of how they did it. Each of them had found something that they were interested in, which they worked hard at, which effectively became their job, which then became their life's passion, and in doing so, they changed the world. And so over the next 10 minutes or so, I want to try and inspire you guys to find out you know, really what you're interested in. Find your life's passion. And if you go on to change the world, brilliant. But at the very least, you will live a more enriching, fulfilling life, which is a good thing. I hope we all agree. Yeah, some nods. A little whimper. Good. I'll take that. OK. First of all, am I enlightened? I would not consider myself enlightened. I'm not a physician. I'm not actually particularly bright. Um, when I was your age, I was throwing sticks up conquer trees and drinking super strength cider in bus shelters. The sheer fact that you are here today means that you are way ahead of where I was at the same time in my life. But since then, I've been busy. As I mentioned earlier, I've got 1.2 million Facebook fans. Um, uh, my business turned over 11 million last year, and I sell morph suits in 20 countries around the world. I have had an impact on the world, but that is not why I consider myself enlightened. I am just incredibly passionate about what I do, and I love my life as a result of it. And that is why I'm here today. I want you guys to be in the same position when you're a bit older, 34, and bearded like me, for the guys anyway. So to start things off, some numbers, 80.1. Anybody have any idea what this means? I know it's a really big ask after lunch, asking questions. It is not the number of people already asleep in this auditorium. That is the average life expectancy of a Scot. For the lads in here, I'm afraid it's slightly less, but it's significantly ahead of the first enlightenment. Next one, half. Anyone know what half could be? It's a tough one, I know. Um, that is the amount of the next 40 years that you, of your time, your waking time, that you will spend working. Ooh. Yeah, I think there was an oh god there, true. Um, and lastly, 58%. 58% is the amount of people who do not enjoy their job. So this is not a lead into a really complex quadratic equation. It is far simpler than that. You guys are roughly a fifth of the way through your life. and. The majority of your life to date has been dictated to you by your loving parental unit. The next four-fifths is the really exciting part where you effectively get handed over the reins. However, the difficulty there is that half of that time is going to be spent working. Oh. Yeah, there's some faces there which is like rubbish. That is only rubbish if you do not enjoy what it is you do. And so that is my big focus um, today on helping you guys work out what it is you want to do with your life's work and all that sort of stuff. And I have a very simple approach to working that out. So the first thing is change your mindset. And 
You're not looking for a job or something to do. You're looking for your mission, your assignment, your life's work. All of this stuff immediately makes it seem more interesting, more fun. A bit like being a spy. And let's face it, in these days of Homeland, everyone wants to be a spy. Good. Um, so yeah, it is out there. You just have to find it. So the next thing, you can do anything. As I said, you're all far brighter than me. You're far more uh, f further ahead and you're thinking. The fact that you are here, and I, as I said, I was drinking cider in a bus shelter when I was your age. So you're already ahead of the game. You are brilliant. And I know it's often difficult when someone tells you, you're brilliant, be confident about stuff and all that. Um, particularly when you look at other people and you think, they're brilliant. And particularly if they're older and you think, oh my god, how did they become that? And so I'm not going to tell you to be more confident, um, have more swagger, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to share an anecdote from a guy called Maury McClellan, who um, is a proud Scot and was the youngest ever managing director of an advertising agency. And I had a one-on-one -on -one with Murray where um, he told me that, he confided in me, there was a time that when he was first promoted, he had some major self-doubt. He was 30 and was heading up Saatchi's. And so he enrolled on a course, a leadership business strategic training course. It cost 20 grand. It was in the States, and it was led by one of the foremost business minds over the past 50 years. So Murray got there on the morning session, and this guy had a quite unique delivery. I'm going to try and do it. He started quiet and then got really loud to make his point. And so he was like, you guys, there's only one thing you got to know. One thing. And so Murray, a bit of a lad, was thinking, brilliant, pen, pad in hand, basically ready to get this holy grail, this insight, and then bugger off down the pub with his new friends that he'd made on this course. And so he was on, on the edge of his seat. The guy was like, there's one thing you've got to know. One thing. No one has a fucking clue what they're doing. <laughs> How amazing is that? <laughs> Preposterous. I'd want my 20 grand back, personally. But um, yeah, and that is something that Murray held dear. And this guy's point was, look, no one was born to be president of the USA, to head up Microsoft, to do all these amazing things that people do. I often like to think of prime ministers and presidents, generally very capable men, not liked by everyone, but let's face it, their jobs are tough. And you know, were they discussing um, tax smoothing systems and whatnot in their nappies? Nope, they were crying and crapping like the rest of us. But they had some natural talent, and they did stuff, they experienced stuff, they achieved, which gave them a unique set of skills and behaviors to be brilliant at what they do today. And that is you know, the big thing. So you, know, you can do anything, but before, and, and you need to find that anything that is yours, but for, before you find that, try everything. So come to talks like today. Watch lots and lots of TED videos. Listen to music, ask your grandparents questions, travel the world, hang out with lots of different people, do stuff that scares you. I always think, challenge yourself with being creative. Write a book, write a song, draw a, paint, a painting. Like Most people would never think about doing that, but why not? Take it on. Um, linked into all of that, um, you've got to scare yourself. and. Um, when you're doing this, you'll be working with people, doing stuff with people. Now, this is not a safe sex message. This is, you know, keep, <laughs> I was going to say, keep your feelers out for the type of people you're working with. No, like literally, just have a think about the type of people that float your boat, that inspire you. They could be your peers. They could be people older than you. Keep your eyes peeled for mentors and coaches and, and all that sort of stuff. Because ultimately, um, you will be working in teams. And inextricably linked to teamwork is leadership. And, I used to work at Procter & Gamble, and the first thing I looked at on a, for us on a CV um, was examples of leadership. Being able to set a direction, envision other people, energize them, enable them, get them buying into ultimately what you want to do is an incredibly powerful uh, trait. And so um, when you're doing stuff, also, you know, you're probably challenge with doing stuff that you don't want to do or you just say no and can't be bothered. That is human nature, but sod that. Say yes, be a yes person. So, you know, in summary of all this sort of stuff, be creative, think, do stuff. Make sense? Very simple? Yeah, some of you are like, yeah, doing it already. Brilliant. And um, there is one which is probably my favorite, which is um, stumble. To stumble, you have to be moving. And 
that is always challenging and often you will learn most when you get stuff wrong. Um, and people look upon that as you know, failure and these sort of nasty words. You will fail um, throughout your life and you know, take it and understand and learn from it. It's often when you learn the most. Um, I'm just going to take my notes and just make sure I'm broadly on brief. How am I doing for time, Charlie? Cool. I won't need that long, don't worry. Um, OK, so the next thing is um, it has never been easier to start your own business. And to be honest, that is my area of expertise. But I didn't want to come in and make this the sort of Morph Suit show. I started Morph Suits um, with a credit card, literally a couple of grand. In the first year, we turned over a million. In the second year, it was about seven. And in our third year, it was 12, 11 or 12, rounded up. Um, now, that journey was um, fascinating. And OK, I'd worked like a bear at university, not so much at school. I was in those bus shelters drinking cider. Um, but then I went to Procter & Gamble and learned a lot. Um, and then it became time for me to try my own thing. But what I would like to try and instill in all of you today is that it is incredibly simple to start your business. Um, for us, we went to Alibaba.com, where you can procure just about anything from olive oil to crude oil kids' toy diggers to JCBs. As it was, we found someone who could make something like a morph suit, which was our idea for things. And um, we started working with them. One thing that still startles me, I can't actually believe we did it, but we put through $1 million worth of business through a company that we had never met face to face. But thanks to the world of Skype and just the fact that it is so small these days, that wasn't a massive deal for us. You know, there was a time you needed millions of pounds to get on TV. Nowadays, you can get to the majority of the world through Facebook, which is ultimately free. So, you know, if you have an idea, give it a go. It is, um, as I say, it has never been more simple to do. So, um, you can do anything, do everything. As you're doing everything, stop every now and again and think. And I know that when you're young, you're in such a rush to, to get on with things. But it is an incredibly powerful thing. Stop and think about what it is that interests you most, what it is that you are best at. Because my hope is that you will find something that you're interested in and something that you are good at. And then you will work harder at that thing. And you will become better at it. And so you'll enjoy it more. And then you work harder, and you'll become better, and you'll enjoy it more, and you'll work harder, and you'll become better and better and better at it. And you get into this cycle of goodness. I mean, it is, it is so simple, but so many people do not find that thing that they're looking for. For me, it is making uh, ridiculous lycra suits and um, bringing joy to the world uh, at parties um, and charity runs um, and things like that. But um, it's, yeah, so, so keep your eyes peeled. It may not just be one thing. Hopefully, it will be lots of things. And these are the sort of your hobbies and the things that you do um, with your life. And then, once you've got some things that you're interested in um, and enjoy, I mean, it could be eating haagen -Dazs. Um So just as a sense check, ask yourself this gargantuan, terrifying, nervous, chuckle-provoking question, what is my purpose? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the nervous chuckle. That is exactly what I'm looking for. But isn't that? That's huge. Most people will never ask themselves that question. But then again, most people hate their job. And because it's half of their waking life upon leaving university, um, they hate their life. How rubbish is that? And so many of my great friends went to uni, did all right, found a job that paid them some money. Literally, it was as simple as that. Spent four years miserable and are now doing the work that they always wanted to do. And I know, OK, money, of course, <laughs> plays a part in it. But that is a huge question. You know, Why are you here? And you've got to be brave to answer it. And I'm, I'm so chuffed that someone did do the nervous chuckle, because I, I ask it to people now. And they, <laughs> you know, uh, they're made nervous by it. So, um, and so to bring this to life, it may not be inventing power or curing cancer. You know, if you want to be a doctor, then it's pretty simple. Your purpose, um, help people, make them better, help them live longer, all that, you know, incredibly simple. For other people, it is not. Um, for me, I make products that make people's lives more fun. It's pretty simple. Um, there's a guy called Fraser Doherty. Have any of you ever heard of him? There's a few nods. Brilliant, brilliant, yeah. So Fraser, his purpose is making jam. He used to go around to his granny's house in his early teens, and he made jam. He just liked it. Bit weird, but he liked it, and so he um, 
made jam, he was 14 or so, and he got quite good at it. Practiced it, asked Granny, read some books, and then he started selling it at his um, local Sunday market. And again, people liked it, they gave some feedback, so he worked it a bit harder, got better at it, started making money, which was when he started enjoying it even more. And then he went and chapped on Waitrose's door with a Channel 4 film crew. And now he sells in Waitrose and Tesco and Russia and Australia, and he's a millionaire, and he gives loads of money to charity, which is what, to be honest, I think he was most interested in. And to me, that is just, you know, simple, and that's from jam. And it, so, as I say, it doesn't have to be curing uh, cancer. So, in summary, <laughs> um, there's a guy, Confucius. He wasn't a scholar, but pretty good lad. And he said, um, to love what you do for your work means you will never have to work a, a day in your life. Um, now, first of all, it isn't work, Confucius, it's your mission. But the, the gist of that was exactly right. And so I encourage you to go out there. First of all, get your thinking straight. You're looking for a mission. You're a spy. Believe you can do anything. Have a go at doing just about everything. And then at the end of all that, ask yourself, what is your purpose? And I truly hope you find it. Thank you very much.